Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we are here in a live interview with Alessia Ellen. Uh, she's an American artist and a writer, and we are looking forward to hear about uh, her story. My name is Marinella, and I'm a visual artist, and I'm a co-founder of Art Classes Group. Uh, we are based here in England, and we are providing art classes on our website, artclassesgroup.com. Our program is it called Don't Just Make Art, Let's Talk About Art. And today we are really uh, you know, curious to find out more about Alicia and how is it to be a writer and an artist and how are the circumstances now in America. So welcome, Alicia, and how are you? Thank you. Yes, I'm doing very well. And I don't mind isolation. It keeps me busy. <laughs> yes. For us, our <laughs> <is heaven. laughs> Yes, you know, and that's that's the joy of it. It's like I don't have to make any excuses uh, to do my art or my writing. You know, whatever floats my boat or melts my butter, as I like to yeah. say. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, we're really curious, Alicia, to find out about your background, uh, your studies, and where your inspiration for art started. Well, when I was a child, uh, I was lucky enough to grow up on a farm where, of course, when you're a child uh, in the midst of fields and tree lines and nature, you know, you, you end up becoming a very, at a very early age, a philosopher. Yeah. And uh, you start appreciating, you know, nature and landscapes and still art. You know, you go through your parents' rooms and you see what it is, you know, they have on their walls, what kind of art, you know, and that's usually our first inspiration is what artwork we see in our parents' homes. And I was surrounded by Courier and Ives. You know, I loved that, um, that type of uh, landscape. It was just very subdued yeah. and uh, a lot of snow scenes, but they were beautiful, you know. And, uh, and also uh, there was a 19th century Japanese uh, art print that my father had um, got when he was uh, in the in the service in the army uh, in the Korean War. Uh, he was stationed in Japan, and he learned of you know their traditions and their culture, and he brought back a few things. And that piece of art, I love the simplicity of it. Mm -hmm. And um, you you uh, uh, you know again, there's more philosophy involved in art. Uh, than a lot of people realize, you know, you're expressing yourself in many different depths, whether it's, you know, very simplistic or whether it has a lot of detail, you're still expressing, you know, all that you are yeah. and it's ever changing and ever evolving. And just like writing, I, I love knowing that about myself. The more I do it, the more I uh, find more out about myself at that stage in my evolution. And um, so those were the beginnings of my artistic interest. And I, of course, on a farm in the wintertime, there's not a whole lot to do. So you're stuck inside. And I taught myself art. Mm -hmm. I said, I want to do that. I want to learn that. So the best way to do it is to grab all my uh, comic books. I had stacks of comic books and I would get rice paper and I would start tracing them. Oh, and then I got comfortable enough with the characters and the heroes and the super, you know, uh, superheroes and who else, you know, the muscular yeah. guys like Tarzan. I had some Tarzans in there and a lot of cartoons. I did the cartoons and I got comfortable enough to put the paper aside and just look at what I was doing because I had practiced enough of the tracing. Right. Yeah. And uh, really, that's what we do. We imitate you know, what we see that we like. And um, then we find our own, our own voice per se. Yes. And, you know, and our own spirit leads us, you know, and we're, we're, uh, we, we allow that inner voice or that inner artist to come out and say, oh, I think I would rather have a little bit more lines over here on this tree, or I would like another branch going on, you know, and then you start finding inspiration where you never thought it could happen. And yeah. that's a that's a wonderful thing, you know. Yeah. Um, we've uh, in my uh, years we've traveled to Italy a couple of times now, and we've uh, 
looked at all the beautiful basilicas there with all the artworks from uh, Raphael and Michelangelo and Leonardo. And, you know, you've seen all of yeah. the, that, the wonderful Renaissance period uh, artwork, mm -hmm. which I just love. Yeah. And uh, so I've added that to my repertoire of, gee, you know, I love the depth of this or the, you know, singling out of that or, you know, sort of things like this. So you learn, you just learn the more you keep your eye open and your heart open for just being open-minded about wanting to add more to you. I'm always a student. Yeah. I will never be anything more than a student. And uh, I'm just expressing through either paper and pen or canvas, you know, uh, <laughs> the same, you know, different kind of stories. You know, it doesn't yeah. matter if it's, you know, words on paper or pictures on a canvas, you're still telling a story. And I love that part. Exactly. I, I just wanted to ask you, you are not working only as a visual artist, you are a writer and you, you published actually, I, I think four books already. Mm -hmm. So I was yeah, just wondering. Four books and a, um, and, a, and a fifth one that's um, uh, a poetry book, an anthology with short stories and poetry. Yes. Oh, that's so interesting. Do you prefer something more or you just balance the work between being a visual artist and a writer? Oh, actually, I'm also an avid gardener because of my love of nature, you know, yes. and I love to put my hands in the soil yes. and I love to mold mm -hmm. the clay, basically. Yeah. You know, I love to go out there and yeah. get more inspiration for my, um, you know, to put the metaphors of nature in my writing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because that adds depth to an individual. And uh, when you're looking at a piece of artwork, you're also seeing all the depths of that person. Anyone who tells you they don't put themselves in their writing is yes. not yeah. being honest with themselves. <laughs> it's true. Honest. I mean, what else have you got? You got you, you got your perception on reality and life. So of course you're putting yourself in your work and why not honor that? Why yeah. not? Why not, you know, find confidence in that and say, you know, this is me. This is my version. And yeah. Yeah. no one is like you and your perception. People can go out there and they can paint a boat on water. And, you know, you see hundreds of them out there, maybe thousands. But no one has painted it from your eyes and your experience exactly. of what you've seen, what you felt, the colors that were brought to you personally. You cannot describe that in anyone else's way but your own. And that's what makes you unique. Exactly. That's what makes you unique as a writer or an artist. So don't think that, oh, it's all been done. Well, not by you, it hasn't. <laughs> so you are important. You need to express yourself. The world is waiting for you to express yourself fully and um, with liberty. You know, yeah. we, we can't wait to see your artwork. We can't wait to read your writings, you know, because we want to know your perspective on things. And that's very important to know. Exactly. And we need to get out the confidence out of us and express yes. yourself, ourselves. Yes. And um, Alicia, I have uh, selected some of your artworks that I, we are really curious to, you know, to find out the story behind them. So I'm going to share uh, with the audience. Um, yeah, so I started with some drawings first. Uh, this is the illustration made in watercolor of a, a dog. Is uh, Maya? Mia? Yes, Mia. Uh -huh. Mia, yes, yes, yes. So is it watercolor? It's amazing. Just watercolor? It's not pencil or charcoal? Yes, it's just watercolor. Um, oh. And the inspiration was from a picture of the like of the same. Uh, that was uh, given to me by my oldest granddaughter, who was very close to this dog. This Whoa. was the family dog. And, yes. of course, it helped for me to know Mia on a personal level, uh, <laughs> for me to get, you know, the personality in her eyes. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, uh, of course, according to my granddaughter, I painted her better than what she imagined oh. her to be. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I said, well, I said, you know, you put life in something, you put yeah. the personality in something mm -hmm. and you take your time. And this is what I've 
heard in some um, young artists, they, they want to rush through things. Yes. This took me, I would say, I can't remember, either four or five days, oh. only because I wanted to pace myself. I wanted the dog, Mia, to speak to me on where to put, you know, the lines. Oh, she's, you know, this, this little fluff here or this little winged piece of hair there, you know. And um, really, you're getting to know the personality of something, especially when you're uh, doing a portrait, either yeah. of an animal or a human being, you're really getting to know them. Yes. And, um, and I think bringing that out is very important, but do take your time. Yes. And I, I did love the idea that uh, it was all in the blacks and the grays of the mm. picture. And that kind of helped that picture be what it is. Indeed, with more, us as an artist, with more we spend time with our sitters, either animal or humans, with more we know them. So it's true, our painting will become more real. We feel the, the you know, the actual feelings of the person we are drawing or the animal. I like the details, you know, of the fur, how you've created. And that fluffiness is, is amazing. <laughs> Yeah, really she was nice. a very fluffy girl. <laughs> <laughs> the next work I have, the same, so nice in detail, very nice illustrated, uh, bison mates. Um, so is it uh, pencil? What technique is it? This is actually pen and ink. Pen and ink. Pen and ink, and I use for the fine details of the fur, um, and the highlights as a 0 .005 yes. uh, uh, draft pen. Yeah. I go as small as I can possibly get. Uh, so <laughs> I can, again, take my time. And uh, just yeah. the paper tends to show you where to put the next line when yeah. you're really yeah. in the groove of things. And, you you know, and um, like anything, you don't want to be distracted. So when you want to really get into your artwork and feel the flow, do not allow yourself to be distracted by any outside sources because then you lose your flow. And I know how that is. When you get up to go do something else, you come back and it's like, okay, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> it's gone. Yeah. You it's know? And yeah. And so it's, that is a struggle sometimes, but yeah. uh, if you, if you connect with it enough and you practice that art of focus enough, it will become second nature. And you can jump right back into it sometimes, but you got to practice that. It's true. Focus is, is uh, indeed a, the best exercise. And yeah. I have uh, the next artwork, uh, the same, a nice illustration of leopard, leopard sneak is the title. I like, I like it how you, you created the flat uh, shadows you know, and very nice textured, the fur of the leopard and the bark of the tree. Very nice illustrated. Um, is it from different pictures or how you, have you got your inspiration? The inspiration, I believe, was from a photograph that uh, a photographer had made and put on, um, you know, uh, the global internet. And yeah. I did, and that, that's, of course, an older uh, picture. So um, I could see where, you know, I would probably add more detail today now that I'm, yeah. you know, uh, more involved in my artwork. But that was pretty good considering where I was at the time of my life. So, right. yeah. <laughs> no, it's nice. You know, it has a simple, but in the same time, very detailed, you know, the, the yeah. main character. It is really nice. Um, probably a throwback from my, uh, my Japanese art days, you know. I yes. to keep things simple. Mm, yes. Uh, and here we have an illustration. Is it uh, a drawing or a painting? It is a watercolor. Right, right. Watercolor, a watercolor on, uh, on 300 uh, paper. 300. Right. So, right. What, what's the name what's of this plant? <laughs> uh, uh, I believe it's uh, Hydrangea Dreams. All oh, right. Yes. Oh, interesting. interesting. Dried, have... Yes, dried hydrangeas. Right, very autumn kind of colors. 
and yes. uh, very nice. Very well, nice. What, that was an inspiration. Those colors were inspired by my love of Victorian uh, um, artwork in the yeah. 19th, 18th, 19th century, um, you know, heavy Edwardian, you know, uh, furniture and uh, Victorian furniture. I, the, the house I grew up in, my mother loved the Victorian era. So everything within that, that time frame, the arts and crafts was very much into the browns and the olive greens and the beiges. And uh, mm -hmm. those colors always to me were very uh, attractive. So that was uh, one of the things I pulled from when working on that piece. Very nice. Uh, and I have the next artwork, uh, Sandhill Cranes in Morning Mist. Uh, is it canvas or the same paper? That is actually canvas. It's yeah. on a long canvas, which I couldn't really get on. You know, you couldn't see the detail, but there's more mist and more gray on either side of them. About three foot oh. total canvas. You're just seeing the, the middle part here. Uh, uh, but um, yeah, that was a recent painting of mine that I just completed. And uh, I loved the challenge of the fluff and actually the body language of yeah. the male. Uh, that was uh, really quite, quite interesting. It took me about a week to do this. Oh, wow. And is it oils or acrylics? This is acrylic. Acrylics. I prefer to work in acrylic. Uh, right. it's, you know, it's it's cleaner, it's yeah. faster cleanup, and there's no smell. Yes, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> what I like it is that, you know, through the mist, it's like I feel or, or the texture of the canvas, and on top of this, you know, it's coming the silhouette of the, the, the birds is really very nice. Very nice. You really capture that feeling of the morning mist. Thank you. But one of my techniques when I paint is the drip, is I spray the background and I let it drip and I let it dry. And then I add something more and then I spray and let it drip and dry. And then I put the foreground into it. I bring it to a desk like I have here. Yeah. And then I add the details while I'm sitting at the desk of what I want in the foreground. Right, right. Interesting, interesting. This might help, you know, indeed to, to enhance and your background, you know, to create different effect or blur. Very nice, mm -hmm. very nice. Uh, this is one piece that I really loved it. So the title is Imperfect Perfection and is a bucket of uh, uh, blueberries on wood. So nice how you created the texture of the blueberries, the wood texture, uh, and the fabric. Very nice. So is it um, painting on that was camera? a lot of fun. Oh. That, is that is paper. That is uh, actually watercolor that, that I uh, would thicken up with just more and more watercolor from the little, this little simple, little container that you can get at any store yeah that's what you know uh with these little paints oh, and uh you, you just keep dipping into them with a wet brush and you keep putting them on your your little palette until they're nice yeah. and thick and uh you know the same way it's just a reverse effect of your acrylics your acrylics you want to thin out with water mm -hmm. to make them look like watercolor sometimes well, with watercolor, I kind of went the other direction and wanted to try it a little thicker to see if I could make that look like an acrylic. And um, I cannot take credit for that picture itself. It's a photo It's a photograph that I got um, from Pinterest. And I cannot, for the life of me, remember the uh, photographer's name. But I, um, uh, that's a beautiful setting that I loved and I thought boy this is going to be a challenge <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I just went with it and yes I enjoy the idea of learning and I le did indeed learn as I went with this yeah. picture this took me a week this took me uh, uh, seven days to finish uh, but the the wood 
you start out with, you know, uh, the beige of the wood as your background. And then yeah. your lines, you just do a little bit darker brown. You add to that, you know, and then you do your lines. And then I noticed there's a little hint of, of red. So I would kind yes. of combine some orange and brown with a little, just a hint of red. And then I would wash that off. And then I would take a little, just a wet brush in water. And then I would go through that each line and then I would wipe it down for it all to blend. And that oh. took time. Uh, yeah, That's so that, that, that made it, I loved that technique. It seemed to work. And I just, again, when you're in the flow, you just allow yourself to do what your instincts yep. tell you. And uh, it turned out and it was, it was an awful lot of fun, especially, gosh, when they turn out, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's true. And uh, I, I'm really curious how you created the white, uh, uh, you know, the white reflection on the berries and on the bucket. Because usually in watercolor, you leave the white of the paper. Right. Well, no, like I uh, had mentioned, I wanted to uh, do a little experimenting and use my watercolors like an acrylic. All right, so yes. I did. a. I I would just put as much white as I possibly could on paper right. and just touch a little bit of the blue in there or a gray. I could, I could right. take the black and the white and put a little gray in there, depending on um, you, you take your darker blues and it's almost a, a gray blue yes. and then you you add another layer on top of that of a a lighter gray and on top of that when it's dry you have a lighter gray and then the highlights are definitely uh the white uh, that come out at the end mm -hmm. which that's a that's a challenge in watercolor let me tell you <laughs> the watercolor is the most difficult technique in art actually is is even yes. though you know, many people consider that oh it can't be possible it's the easiest we are using as children but no it is the most difficult it's so much to learn from watercolor and you have to be fast with a, a lot of the, exactly. the ways that uh you know i mean one of my um my favorite authors uh, authors uh artists is peter sheeler right. and he makes it look so easy he and ann hart <laughs> Um, and I've been watching lately, also learning from uh, Louise DeMossi. Louise right. DeMossi, she's very good. And they all make it look so easy, you know. <laughs> uh, but if you practice what they, they show and their techniques, um, they get, especially Peter, you know, he takes a big old brush with a lot of color and a lot of water. And he starts at the top and, I, you know, and you have to just keep going down and down and down. I'm thinking... I, I, I have to sometimes take a break. So, you know, that's, <laughs> I, I can't, I can't do that in that technique. Yeah. So you know, I've got laundry to do. I've got a, you know, I've got a phone to answer. I've got other things going on in my life. Um, so yeah, you know, oh yeah, it's lunchtime. I think I better go eat, you know, so, <laughs> and, uh, before you know it, you're you're dry. Your board is dry, and you can't get that same flow of what they showed you. You're doing so. I had to learn a different technique for myself with watercolor, and uh, and not be so um, hurried by it. it. People get exhilarated by that sort of thing, which is wonderful. And I've practiced it. It is fun, um, yeah. but I still have a lot more. Um, learning to do with yes. that technique, uh, if I could say that. <laughs> Believe me, the same. I, I discover techniques literally every day, every day, something new. So as an yes. artist, you said your whole life, you just discover continuously. And I have uh, uh, the last artwork that I selected is a landscape, um, is a Kenyan lake, a Zion, mm -hmm. Zion Kenyan Lake. Zion, where, where, yes. where is it uh, exactly? Where is a place in America or? It is Zion National Park is out uh, in the western part of the United States. A very popular national park. I have not yet been there yet, but I've seen many beautiful photo yeah. uh, photographs 
that uh, just bring me into much awe about you know nature and mountains and streams and things. And this one struck me particularly. Um, and I had this little canvas, little flat canvas. Um, and I was uh, bored one day and said, okay, let's give it a shot. And again, made a watercolor. And I thought, okay, I'm really giving myself a challenge on a, a yeah. little canvas that has a lot of tooth to it. That's not yes. meant for watercolor. How am yeah. I going to pull this off? You know, yeah. but uh, it's again, more layers and more layers and more layers. And that's a lot to put into one little canvas. Yes. Yes. So yes. Perhaps I got a little carried away. <laughs> <laughs> what is striking is that indeed you can feel the texture of the canvas. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, with all this, you added so many details. So it is really astonishing. I really like it, uh, Alicia, that you are really experimenting for each artwork. It's, it's mm -hmm. so trying to discover all the time new things with each artwork. It is amazing. Um, and Alicia, uh, just the, the last question. Uh, for young artists that they want to pursue a career in art or they want you know to have a passion what advices would you have for them oh, follow what your instinct tells you you like doing if you really enjoy um drawing animals then learn more about that you know there are so many uh instructors nowadays and you know um in their art uh masters that are out there making all kinds of money that are on YouTube that uh, have wonderful instructional videos, you know, like yourself, you're, you're bringing folks here to teach yeah. them things and it's wonderful, you know, and there are so many ways to do that. Um, yeah. Follow what, just follow what interests you. Um, and what I would suggest is, you know, um, there are so many, people that will tell you, oh, I want you to go and do something modern for a while. I want you to just splash colors on, you know, well, you never know what you might learn from that technique yeah. and you can apply it to your drawing or your painting of your animal. You know, that's, really um, that's one of the things I really loved knowing is that, you know, I can take uh, a, a technique from Alphonse uh, Mucha and yep. I can apply it to my uh, Courier and Ives theme that I might want to have, you know, of a landscape, you know, uh, and just uh, maybe do a little more pen and ink illustration of flowers to go into a landscape or something like that. And voila, I've just created an Alicia, you yes. know, because <laughs> <laughs> so you don't know what kind of interest you have that might expand somebody else's so whatever you think oh you know what it won't hurt to experiment it won't hurt to learn more about something else that i can actually apply to what i do like to do exactly um and it's the same thing with when you're writing you know um i love getting biographies on mm -hmm. artists on writers, you know, on, uh, you know, the classic literature is, is uh, my favorites. Um, Tolstoy, uh, John Donne, Homer, you know, Isaac Dennison. I love all those. And I got biographies on them. And uh, as well as Michelangelo and Leonardo and uh, Shakespeare and all those people, whether you're an artist or a writer, it doesn't hurt to look up mm. who were they as children? How did, were they, raised in their cultures or in their societies yeah. and what made them have that spark of creativity yes. and brought them to a canvas or to a wall, you know, or to the yeah. Sistine yeah. Chapel, you know, what brought them there? Well, they had to be raised as children and go through school just like we did. They had to yeah. learn stuff in their society, what was going on. Some of them had the black plague they had to deal with, you know, if you think the pandemic is is bad, you know, exactly. we, we've all in every era, every yeah. artist has gone through so much going on in their society. And yet they've turned out the most beautiful pieces. 
sometimes through tragedy, sometimes through just heart love of I want to get away and be distracted and do something that I feel that yeah. needs to be put down on canvas or paper. Allow yourself that time, allow yourself that focus. And uh, again, that's very important. I think that the masters have taught us just focus. It doesn't matter what's going on outside your windows, outside in the world. What matters is the peace that you have within yourself that I think I would like to paint. Well, that's a nice, simple treat for yourself. Go ahead, make room for that in your life and do it. You don't know what's going to turn out. It's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the next Michelangelo. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alicia. You know, oh. you gave such inspirational words. I mean, I think we need it. Mostly here being in England, next week, complete lockdown. Oh. <laughs> I, it's like we needed your advice. So thank you so much for this. Uh, and thank you. Indeed, it is good, you know, to, to experiment as much, be a, a visual artist, paint, draw, write. So try to experiment as much as you can. Uh, like you said, develop your focus is so important for our probably also mental health, is it? To keep um, ourselves healthy. So thank you so much for this. Hopefully the young ones also will follow your advices. You gave us also so many techniques and advices. A nice definition of watercolors and acrylics. Very nice. So thank you so much, Alicia, once again. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much. I appreciate the time. Thank you. <laughs> Keep safe there in America. And uh, yes, hopefully we'll meet again with new projects. We are really curious to find out more about you and your writings. I'll keep following you and what you are doing. Very inspirational. Um, so, yes, hopefully see you soon, Alicia. <laughs> Thank you, Marinella. Thank you. Take care. And everyone else, please visit us next Sunday, the same three o'clock. We'll have uh, more guests, uh, more ideas, more uh, advices for everyone. Um, and you can follow us on social media at our classes group. And you can see all these interviews and get inspired, get advices. And yes, thank you so much for everyone for watching us. And see you soon. And thank you so much, Alicia. Thank you. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye. <laughs>